Hello everyone, good evening. Welcome to Sociology Analytica. This is Pooja Prasanna, your Sociology faculty. So let's start with our third question. The third question is, scope of sociology is dynamic and ever evolving. Justify your answer with the help of illustrations. It's a 20 marker question, okay? Scope of sociology is dynamic and ever evolving. Justify your answer with the help of illustration. See, it's a very simple question. Honestly, it's a very simple question. They have not asked a particular time period. They have not asked a particular school of thought. What they have asked is, it's ever evolving and it's dynamic and ever evolving. That means, what you have to do is, you have to start from the initial phase of the scope of sociology. That is, how sociology started at the early time period and how sociology, that is, how the study of sociology evolved with the time. Understand? So, this is what they are asking. That is how it was and how it evolved with the time. Okay? So, you have to literally write everything. Like all sort of school of thought, you have to put it in this answer. Like as many as you can put, so more, the more you will be getting the marks. Fine? And see, the second statement is <coughs> justify the your answer with the help of illustration. That means, see, Simply you cannot uh, write, uh, for example, postmodernist school and just say something uh, or give some explanation and then leave it there. What you have to do is, suppose if you are putting any school of thought, you have to explain what is what the school of thought or what you have to do is at least write a thinker. Okay, write at least one or two thinker under that school of thought. Let it be anything. Suppose let's say you are studying, you are doing feminist school of thought, at least one thinker or one or two thinker is at least minimum in this particular answer okay see it is a 20 marker question and too many uh, uh, you know school of thought will be there so at least make sure to write one or two thinkers fine not more than that this is more than sufficient so as we have understood the question let's start with our answer structure the first and foremost is introduction see what you can write in the introduction is, see, the, the, the introduction is all about the keyword and that is here, the keyword is scope of sociology. That is the keyword. So, what you can write is, uh, and they are also asking the scope is evolving, that it is, is evolving with the time. So, you can take the style that sociology, though sociology emerged in European countries, it flourished in US and then it penetrated into the Asian countries. As the society is evolving, the scope of sociology, the scope of the subject also evolved. So, let us discuss the scope of subject in the, in the following points. So, something like this you can write and then you can switch to the body of the answer. So, in this body of, in this, con, uh, in this particular section, what you have to do is, you have to start from the beginning, okay, you have to start from the beginning, how they used to study sociology in the beginning, okay. So, we, you can either write simply initial phase or you can write the phase of modernity, that is phase of modernity, that is all the thinkers, that is byproduct of modernism. So, in, immediately after modernity, how sociologists were studying, okay. So, this is the first phase. Under first phase, how are they studying? That is, they, they uh, studied from a macro perspective, that is, they considered society as a whole. Then they used positivistic approach. Positivistic approach means what? Uh, studying society from a scientific perspective. And then empirical reality. Empirical reality means the observable fact. However, the facts are, they used to take it on, on, on the face value, okay? Observable facts and then humanistic approach. Humanistic approach is, see, at the, at the beginning of modernity, though there were so much changes which was happening in the society, there was too much chaos, there was too much problem. Why did, this sociolo why did the sociology emerge? The sociology emerged to give an answer to the change. So, the initial thinkers had a humanistic approach in them. That is, they wanted to give a solution to the problems. Okay? So, these were the approaches which was taken by whom? Taken by the early thinkers. So, see, this are, these are the points. But then, in the question, there was justify with illustration. Illustration means you have to give at least one, one example to each of it. So, for macro perspective, you can say August Comte. Okay, August Comte, uh, August Comte studied from the macro perspective, isn't it? How did he study society? He studied society from what? Social static and then social dynamic. Okay, 
August comp studied from social August comp studied from social static and social dynamic perspective, and then positivistic approach. Again, you can give August comp as positivistic approach, or you can also give one more example like Durkheim. Durkheim when he studied suicide, which approach he took? He took scientific approach or positivistic approach. Then empirical reality. Again, you can give anybody August comp, Herbert Spencer, Saint Simon. Durkheim, all of them actually, uh, you know, used empirical reality, and then humanistic approach. Uh, you can give, you know, uh, for example, Spencer for you know humanistic approach. Sorokin, okay, you can actually give Sorokin as this example for this humanistic approach because Sorokin also emphasized on what emphasizing in understanding and giving solution to the societal problems. Okay, understand? This is the first phase. Moving on to the next moving on to the next phase after this phase see after this phase more, more or less they were studying a society from a macro perspective that is everything at large okay and then comes the and then comes the next phase of life phase of uh, sorry phase of uh, social study wherein so there was a new school of thought that is called as formalistic school of thought okay formalistic school of thought see this school of thought is also called as interpretative school of thought formalistic school of thought it is also called as interpretive school of thought or uh, micro school of thought they are also called as micro school of thought what does that mean they actually focus too much they are, they are focused on what studying society from a micro perspective okay formalist school of thought is also called as interpretive school of thought or also called as micro school of thought so here they focused on what focused on studying society from a micro perspective so after writing this what you have to do you have to give some illustration or you have to give some example so you can write weber weber is the father of interpretative school you can write weber and then just give one one uh, illustration or you can write simmel george simmel is also uh, he also belongs to formalistic school of thought he believes that society has to be studied from a micro perspective or you can write ferdinand tonis ferdinand tonis studies he, what he what does he say he says society has to be studied uh, from two different perspective that is at a micro level okay so he says society has to study from gemin shaft or jeschel shaft perspective okay did you understand you can give any example for this formalist school of thought any thinkers whatever you can think of you can write it in your answer but at least try to write any two thinkers okay next moving on to the other school of thought that is synthetic school of thought who are the synthetic school school of thought see synthetic school of thought are the same set of people that is who continued who continued the from the modern uh, that that is uh, initial phase that is initial phase also they studied from macro perspective this synthetic school of thought they also continued studying from a macro perspective okay uh here you can give some examples that i have taken durkheim durkheim also studied from a macro perspective you can give any example you can give his study of suicide you can give his uh, study of division of labor any example you can give then karl mannheim karl mannheim also studied from a macro perspective sorokin sorokin also studies from macro perspective okay he says uh, sociology can be divided into two that is general sociology and then specific sociology what are general sociology general sociology is basically where all the social institutions which are present everywhere okay religion is present in every society uh, politics is present in every society family is present in every society all the institution which comes in 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 it present in every society they come under general sociology and specific sociology are basically which is present only in a particular society for example caste system caste system is present only in india okay whichever is specific which is present in specific society it comes under specific sociology but even then even if you are studying caste you will be studying from a macro perspective that is the overall indian perspective understand so uh, whosoever studies from macro perspective give some examples here under synthetic school and whosoever will be studying from micro perspective give under the formalistic school did you understand this all of you and going and moving on to the next school of thought uh, that is uh, you know further how sociology evolved the see we are studying evo evolution of sociology or the a scope of sociology the next is the phase where there was no as such you know argument whether should we use micro or whether should we use macro there was a you know there, uh, there was a truce between micro and macro school of thought they thought that okay we cannot have that strict division whenever it is required we will use sometimes we will use micro sometimes we will use macro however it is feasible okay so this 
you know phase in this phase where they are using both micro as well as macro so this is the next phase and for this again you can use or you can give any thinkers any thinker any school of thought any anybody you can think of at least one or two okay so here i have taken parsons okay and then robert merton and then c w mills c right mills okay so what did parsons study parsons study social action and social system action system okay <clears throat> see you might have not studied by now but it is there okay eventually all these people okay merton c w mills parsons durkheim everybody will be studying in detail okay initially it will look like oh my god so many names are there how to remember trust me on this when you finish the entire syllabus all these names will be so much in your fingertips okay so you won't feel oh my god whether we will ever re remember let me tell you this you will be remembering for sure okay so the people who you know clubbed both micro as well as macro perspective is parsons because when he studies social system and action system he will be combining both macro as well as micro perspective and next merton so merton when he studies when he gives uh, middle range theory when he gives middle range theories so he will be combining both macro as well as micro perspective c w mills c w mills when he'll be when you know sociological imagination okay he gives a concept it's a very beautiful concept called a sociological imagine, imagination so when he'll be studying the sociological ima imagination uh, so he will be giving both uh, he'll be using both micro as well as macro perspective okay give any one or two uh, illustrations or give any one or two uh, examples moving on to the next phase okay moving on to the next phase so in this next phase you can uh, use marxist phase uh, post modernist phase and feminist phase so basically these are the phase where they do not actually you know uh, come either in macro or micro they have their own uh, style of studying the society okay so in marxist phase so marxism basically they do not fit into any of this micro or macro okay they do not fit into this micro macro debate so what they believe is that they actually have a different ideology and that is they believe that the society is having a dominant ideology okay the society is controlled by dominant ideology okay so that is basically from the class perspective from the class perspective they'll be studying okay this you can write and then you can give some uh, you can give marks as an example anybody to that as an example next moving on to post modernist phase what is post modern they do not believe in eternal truth they do not believe in single truth what they say is that whatever is true today tomorrow it might be a false information say so they do not believe in grand theories they do not believe in generalization okay so for this you can give one example you can give anthony giddens you can give anthony giddens as an example okay uh, he is also a very important uh, and uh, very good post modernist okay moving on to next phase that is feminist phase feminist phase again so feminist is also very much similar to marxist marxism only feminist ideology is similar to marxist marxist ideology so they also believe that there is a dominant ideology in society whereas marx they believe that specifically it is with respect to class ideology here feminists believe that there is a male dominated society it is a male dominated society and uh, they try to you know bring changes in the society uh, you can give some example you can give anne oakley okay anybody anybody you can think of you can give that as an example okay see there is nothing like okay you have to give only particular this example no when you finish sociology you will have so many names in your mind you can just give any example you can think of okay so this is what this is the flow chart of how sociology was in the initial phase how it evolved and then how it is now okay so to a greater extent things have changed in a drastic way so you will be showing all these things understand and then finally coming to the conclusion part so see this is a very um, you know so this is a topic where you are justifying your answer where you are giving so many things uh, as such do not dwell on to the conclusion oh my god what should we write don't dwell on too much keep the conclusion very simple in a one line or two line uh, you know conclusion should be your conclusion uh, because when you like think too much you will tend to you know uh, go wrong don't think too much write a simple conclusion so i have written one conclusion thus where thus with a never ending changes in the society scope of sociology is also dynamic and everlasting because you have given justification just above so now you are just concluding for that understand all of you see uh, i personally feel this is the simplest question it's a 20 marker question 
and if you thoroughly know scope of social if you read so scope of sociology for sure you will be able to track uh, tackle this okay and thus i'm completing the chapter 1 that is sociology the discipline from tomorrow i'll be going to the next chapter that is sociology as science what i've decided is at least in at least in paper 1 from every chapter i'll be discussing three three questions okay and also from for every thinkers also i'll be discussing three three questions so from tomorrow i'll be taking sociology as science okay and if you have any queries please drop your queries in the comment section thank you all